Now, Senator Bernie Sanders uh, this weekend delivered the keynote speech at the People's Summit, which is a progressive gathering of, of course, a lot of uh, 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 very important progressives that have gotten together to try to figure out how to move the progressive revolution forward. Now, there's uh, I have some videos of the speech, and in this video I have Bernie Sanders talked about the state of the political revolution. Uh, and well, let, let's take a look at the video. Our ideas and our progressive vision, we are the future of this country. Nope. It's not Bernie, it is you. We are in this together and always have been and always will be. There is no question, there is no question, there is no question that we have won the battle of ideas and we are continuing to win that battle and that is, brothers and sisters, no small thing. All right, so... <laughs> Look, uh, th there's a part of that that I absolutely love. Uh, it's when they started chanting, Bernie, 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 Bernie. And he says, no, 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 no. It's not about Bernie. It's about you. We're in this together. We always have been and always will be. So that's actually super important uh, because they like the like some of the mainstream corporate Democrats like to paint Bernie Sanders as some sort of weird cult leader, which is insane, but that's what he do. Uh, that's what they do. And Bernie Sanders has always been out there saying, no, no, it's not about me. It's actually about the ideas. It's about the ideas. It's also about you. You're the political revolution. I'm not, I couldn't do anything without people's support. And that's what it's been about. So it's, so it's always funny when corporate media and corporate Democrats like to come out and say, Oh my God, look at the Bernie Sanders cult leader, cult leader. Now, as far as the ideas winning, well, what he means by those ideas, by the progressive vision is that it, it's, it's about popular progressive legislation. And I mean, popular with the people, not popular with people uh, that are in the political class. Now, for example, let me give you some policy proposals that Bernie Sanders championed during the campaign. And he's been ca uh, championing these policies for as long as he's been on the political scene. So this is, of course, uh, Medicare for all, which is a good example. Uh, now, to show you how popular it is, especially in the, in the last year or so, um, I want to give you a recent Economist YouGov poll. Now, they have the expansion of Medicare for all favored by 60% of Americans. Now, let me give you the quick breakdown here. Now, of the political parties uh, involved in this who support uh, Medicare for all, you have 75% of Democrats. Well, that's obvious, right? Uh, what about 58? What, what about in, independents? Well, it turns out 58% of independents, that is again, a sizable majority and independents are who you want to court in order to vote for you. 58% of them want a Medicare for all system. And of course you have 46% of Republicans that is close to a majority. Not quite there, but you're pretty close. Now of ideologies, you have 82% of whom who are liberal. Okay. Well, what about the moderates? Remember the moderates are the people that the democratic party are trying to court, right? Oh, we want to get the moderate voters. So in order to get the moderates, we can't go too far to the left. We've got to be a center left party. Or we got to be a centrist party. We got to get those moderates. Well, what happened? What are the mo how do the moderates feel about Medicare for all? Sixty percent of them are in favor of expanding Medicare to everybody, and of course, conservatives forty three percent. Now, interestingly enough, they broke also they also broke it down by income, right? Now, unsurprisingly, sixty three percent of family in uh, of families making under fifty thousand dollars a year that is under the median income in the United States. Well, they're in favor of Medicare for all. Now, as far as uh, family incomes or families that have income between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars a year, you have fifty-eight percent of them saying, "Yeah, Medicare for all makes sense." Hmm. Now, uh, what about 
people with family income over $100,000 a year. All right, the people that are going to be taxed heavily under this system, if we have a Medicare for All system, that's who's mostly going to pay for it. 63% of Americans who make over $100,000 a year, who would be taxed the most, also are in favor of Medicare for All, expanding it to everybody. And then, of course, they broke it down by uh, voters. 80% of Clinton voters, of course, th that's ironic uh, because... Hillary Clinton herself went on the campaign trail and said, yeah, sing, universal health care, single payer, that will never, ever happen. Ever. 80% of Clinton voters. <laughs> Is it any wonder why Clinton's support evaporated completely after the election? Because they were never with her to begin with. I was like, eh, we're against this doofus, this orange moron uh, that was running but we're not actually with you. You suck too. <laughs> you just sucked less. Now, you also have, speaking of uh, the person who sucked more, uh, Trump voters, right? Or, or, I'm sorry, Trump. Well, what do his voters think about Medicare for all? Turns out 40% of Trump voters think that, yeah, Medicare for all sounds great. Interesting. So, look, this is incredibly popular. Now, there's one idea. I'm going to break down some of the others. What about a living wage? Well, again, according to a Pew Research poll, a uh, living wage, $15, is backed by 52% of all Americans. And if you go back to $12, there's even more popular support. $10, even more popular support. So more people are in favor of raising the minimum wage, I guess incrementally, if you're talking about. So, okay, hey, that makes sense. Now, education. 62% of Americans said that they support making public college tuition free for anyone who is wishing to attend, according to a survey by Bankrate. Now, tuition free college, they said, was more popular with millennials than baby boomers. 77% of people ages 18 to 29 supported tuition free college, while roughly half of people 50 and older did. Now, they said, uh, and this is according to Steve Pounds, Bankrate analyst, he said, the older you are, the less likely you were to support it. Well, that actually makes a whole lot of sense. That's because many of them in that age category don't understand how the cost of college now is impacting younger people. Now, there's a reason for that. It's because back in the day, back in the 1960s and 70s, colleges were actually much more affordable than they were now. Since then, we have had over 1,000% increase in the cost of getting a, higher, uh, a college degree, getting higher education. Now, you also have the fact that a college degree doesn't necessarily guarantee a good job, like many of us were told. See, we we're always told the lie of, hey, you, get a, you go to college, you're going to get a good job. We said, okay, well, hey, man, a uh, college degree is not going to cut it anymore, so we'll go to college. We'll take on this debt willingly because we think that there is, and we've been sort of promised that we're going to get a better job, a better paying job, uh, so we can pay off this debt. Okay, so we're going to take out the debt, but don't worry, we're going to get a job so we can pay this off. Okay, that's a fair trade, right? Well, that didn't happen. It's not really happening that way. What's more likely now to happen is that you're going to end up getting a crappy job and a giant load of debt that you can't get rid of even through bankruptcy. Now, then of course, you also have some of the people that they actually did get the good jobs uh, and but they actually, they, they don't want you to succeed, so they kick the ladder out from under them by decreasing access to education uh, for people cut, by cutting Pell Grants. I mean, uh, Paul Ryan's a great example. He received Social Security, uh, death benefits, and then he went to college. He used that to pay for college. And he's like, Pell Grants, Social Security, cut it. Get rid of it. Let's kick that ladder from underneath you so that you cannot be successful either. And then say, well, hey, man, you got a problem with that? Here's some fucking bootstraps. Go do it. <laughs> so, and of course, uh, other things that they try to do is they guarantee that college costs will continue to rise without any sort of controls. And they also empower for-profit universities, which are predatory in nature, uh, like Trump University, for example, as well as the other myriad uh, uh, numbers of schools out there that are purely for profit and that have been taking advantage of students with federal money. So there's some of the issues that he talks about, right? 
And it turns out we kind of win on those issues. When progressives win on those issues, look, I'm not saying that we always win, especially when it comes to red states, but we get pretty close. Because it turns out people actually like to have an alternative, even if they don't actually go for that alternative. And you end up uh, with, of course, more people going out to vote. So this is the message, of course, that the Democratic Party doesn't seem to understand. They think, hey, man, let's go further to the right. Let's appeal to the so-called moderates. Well, going back to Medicare for all, turns out moderates are actually in more support of Medicare for all than things like Obamacare or the AHCA or Trump care. And, and you know why? It's because it, it makes sense. This, isn't, this shouldn't be a political thing. But the Democrats, the corporate Democrats, of course, present themselves as pragmatists. But these policy proposals, higher minimum wage, tuition free education, uh, as well as, um, you know, Medicare for all, those are actually the real pragmatic positions. And they're good solutions to some of the country's problems. These are actual common sense proposals that will make the country better off. Not the liberal or neoliberal centrist bullshit put forward by people like Hillary Clinton and now, of course, John Ossoff. Now, Ossoff, of course, uh, who doesn't, who came out recently and said, I don't support uh, Medicare for all. I'm actually for, a, for an incremental approach. Here we go again with that incrementalist bullshit. No, they're out there actually not being with the majority. They're actually not being pragmatic. Where we, whereas progressives actually have the pragmatic real solutions that will actually work. And progressives, we need to work uh, to push back against the notion that center-right policy uh, positions are pragmatic. Turns out that they're not. They don't actually work. So, it, for example, how is pushing for industry profits at the expense of sick people pragmatic? It's not. But that's what Obamacare does. That's what the AHCA does. The, the, that's the fatal flaw with Obamacare is that it's based on propping up an industry. So, <laughs> uh, look, how is pushing for privatization of some of the public goods pragmatic? It turns out it's not. For example, you, look, you've got a private company, say Nike. They're pretty good at making sneakers, right? We want them to keep making fucking sneakers because they're good at it. But really, do we need a private corporation acting as a profit skimming middleman when it comes to healthcare, that doesn't make any sense it's actually cheaper to go with government sponsored insurance because it's a single payer model which right now we have a third payer model like we have somebody that's literally just exists in the middle for profit that makes no sense to me none at all why do we need them why should they be involved in healthcare? there's absolutely no reason and the good thing is that these questions are what Bernie Sanders is starting to get America to ask. And when it comes to victories, look, Sanders didn't win the presidency. That's fairly obvious. But he did something a lot more important, I think. And I believe he has helped to make progressive policy more mainstream. He's actually brought these questions and brought these policies back to the forefront. And that, I think, is even better than just winning the presidency. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.